Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight for 23 ABC News at 5. I'm Jessica Harrington. Tonight's top stories. Coronavirus concerns in Kern County. We'll tell you how many people are being monitored here at home after traveling abroad and what officials are saying about it. Plus, the flu death total in Kern County continues to rise. We'll tell you how many more deaths are being reported. 23 ABC News at 5 starts right now. Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 5 starts now. Good evening. Tonight, Kern Public Health says they are monitoring 11 local residents who have traveled itineraries, including stops in China amid coronavirus concerns. 23 ABC's Tori Cooper joins us live from outside the Public Health Department with what local health officials are saying about these 11 residents who have been potentially exposed to the virus. Tori? Yes, in light of the recent 28 confirmed coronavirus cases in the state of California, our local health officials here at the Kern County Public Health Department say they are doing their best to keep a very close eye on travel itineraries to ensure that the virus does not continue to spread around the area. 11 individuals who have traveled to China but live in Kern County are officially on the radar for local public health officials. We confirm that indeed they have not developed any symptoms. We talk to them about where they have traveled, but these are very low risk individuals. Again, they're not showing signs, but they have traveled in an area that may potentially have had coronavirus. Current public health officials say 11 national airports across the nation are currently screening travelers for the coronavirus who have traveled in and around China. Meadowsfield Airport is not one of the 11. If a person is showing symptoms of fever, coughing or respiratory issues, they are considered high risk and the CDC quarantines these travelers for 14 days. If a traveler is showing no symptoms and is considered low risk, they are sent home but their name is still shared to the State Department of Public Health because of their travel. California Department of Public Health then notifies the local health jurisdiction of these individuals. We make contact with these travelers immediately and we do a local assessment. In a press conference today, state officials say 33 people have tested positive for the coronavirus and 8,400 others are being monitored closely by their local health department. The most recent California case popped up Wednesday, the virus infecting a Solano County woman who is now receiving treatment. That case, just four and a half hours away from Bakersfield. But closer to home, Tulare County Public Health officials confirmed nine people also voluntarily quarantined themselves on Wednesday after traveling through China within the last 14 days. Officials say the nine people are not showing symptoms and the risk to Tulare County residents remains low. Many stores in Kern County telling 23 ABC News they are sold out of masks. The CDC says only those who are infected, caring for the infected, or showing symptoms of the coronavirus should wear a mask. Otherwise, they are not recommended. Public Health still standing by their original statement. Kern County is at very low risk uh, for coronavirus coming and impacting our residents. Public Health hoping for the best, but still planning for the worst. And if for some reason coronavirus were to impact our community, we are definitely ready. We have been meeting with hospitals and local health care providers. Now, of the original 33 confirmed cases in the state of California, five of those people have since moved out of state, bringing that number again down to the current 28 people that are residing in the state of California with a confirmed case of the coronavirus. Now, our local health officials say that of the 11 people that they are currently keeping a very close eye on, none of them have required an official test from the CDC. But for now, in East Bakersville, I'm Tori Cooper for 23 ABC News Connecting You. 23 ABC spoke to Sheriff Donnie Youngblood earlier today regarding a number of topics, including the coronavirus. He addressed the potential concerns of coronavirus hitting local jails. You can imagine uh, having a confined area with uh, 2,000 or plus inmates in custody and you get the coronavirus. We have to segregate and this could be a logistical nightmare for us. So uh, my team is they're planning, they're working with public health. Uh, we have some empty space that uh, for uh, segregation that we'll have to use, uh, but we're very concerned and we're, uh, we're trying to put a plan together so we're prepared for it because we know it's coming. Sheriff Youngblood said he'll continue to work with public health to determine a plan for moving forward in the event local jails are hit with the virus. You can listen to our entire interview with the sheriff on turn to 23.com.
Earlier today, Governor Gavin Newsom addressing the state regarding the latest on the virus outbreak. He announced today that 33 people in California have tested positive for coronavirus. The case yesterday understandably generated a lot of attention, but didn't surprise any of the folks standing to my left or right. We knew this was inevitable. Governor Newsom said during the press conference, five of the 33 people who tested positive have since moved out of the states as if, as excuse me, I should say out of the state as officials deal with the virus. Previously, state officials had said there were 31 positive cases of the coronavirus. Newsom saying today the top priority is expanding the ability to do tests on the virus. He did say he's happy with how the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has responded. I'm very pleased the CDC uh, is moving expeditiously on that and have made firm commitments to the state of California uh, that will significantly and exponentially expand our capacity to advance those testing protocols. <clears throat> The CDC confirmed yesterday the first person to person transmission of the virus in Solano County in Northern California. Meantime, lawmakers working toward an agreement on funds for the virus. Yesterday, the president announced Vice President Mike Pence would head the task force. Today, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi spoke to him and brought up concerns about his credibility, but said she looks forward to working with him. Local Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said that party line shouldn't get in the way of addressing this problem. What is certain here is that there's just no time for politics. Diseases don't know party lines, and I would imagine members of Congress would drop the partisanship to coordinate efforts on keeping our country safe. McCarthy tweeting this afternoon that he and his office are monitoring the situation in the West Coast. For updates on the outbreak, be sure to head to our website, turn to 23com the Kern County Public Health Department has confirmed the flu death toll has risen once again. The department confirming 11 flu related deaths for the 2019 2020 flu season. Last week, public health reported the number had jumped from four to seven. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention said influenza has resulted in between 9 million to 45 million illnesses, between 140,000 and 810,000 hospitalizations, and between 12,000 and 61,000 deaths annually since 2010. Kern County Public Health officials say the best defense against the flu is getting a vaccine. If you'd like to know more about the propositions going on this year's ballot, today there will be a meeting to discuss Proposition 13. One of the speakers at the Bakersfield Tea Party meeting is Eric Eisenhammer. He's the grassroots director of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Eisenhammer will be talking about Prop 13 on the California primary ballot, as well as two petitions related to the proposition. The meeting is located at Rusty's Pizza on Ming Avenue and will begin at 6 p.m. Admission for the meeting is free. We are just two days until the South Carolina primary and former Vice President Joe Biden leads in state polls and needs a win after floundering results in the early states. This as Senator Bernie Sanders hopes to retain momentum as the national front runner. ABC's Trevor Alt has a look ahead. It's what many consider a do or die state for Joe Biden and the former Vice President is leading in South Carolina polls, hoping to use the state as a springboard in the Democratic race. But he's still keeping an eye on Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders Medicare for all push uh, will be a long, long, expensive slog. It cost over $35 trillion and the patients can't afford to wait. What do we want? Bernie! What do we want? Sanders has rocketed to the top of national polls, but with that momentum, he's now enduring an onslaught of attacks from the other contenders. Some saying he can't gather enough widespread support to win in November. All those people who say Bernie can't beat Trump, take a look at the last 50 national polls. Bernie beats them 47 out of 50. Sanders sits in second in South Carolina polls. In third, a surprise candidate, billionaire businessman Tom Steyer, who has yet to win any delegates in the first three states. While in third nationally, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who isn't on the ballot in South Carolina, instead focused on his Super Tuesday debut. Early voting is in full swing, and we now have only five days until Super Tuesday. So when we need Clutch City to come through. Even though it's crunch time in South Carolina, many of the candidates have moved on to campaign in Super Tuesday states, and several of them have launched multi-million dollar ad buys. Trevor All, ABC News, New York.
And 23 ABC wants to help you make an informed decision on Super Tuesday, which is less than a week away on March 3rd and the day that California voters go to the polls. We have information on local measures, national and local candidates, along with propositions on our website. Turn to 23.com. We had another warm day across Kern County. This is all thanks to high pressure dominating just off the coast of California. So today we did see an increase in those clouds, which kept temperatures down from what we were feeling yesterday, at least here in Bakersfield. So not quite at that record breaking heat, but we did see warmer temperatures across the Kern County desert and down in the South Mountains, and you can expect these warm and dry conditions to continue. So the stable air mass is keeping those relative humidity values in the teens in the desert and just at 26% relative humidity here in Bakersfield. But due to that increased cloud cover, you can expect those overnight temperatures to be slightly warmer than what we've been feeling the past few days due to those clear skies. So still in those low 70s in Bakersfield at 6 p.m. and in those 60s by 10 p.m., 49 degrees in Tehachapi at 10 and 56 in Mojave. But that high pressure is actually going to be making its way onshore, centered right over California tomorrow. So we are tracking the chance to see that record breaking heat yet again. I'll let you know just how warm we could be getting and when a big cool down is on the way coming up next. This morning, loved ones said their final goodbyes to firefighter Patrick Jones, one of the two firefighters killed last week in the Porterville Library fire. This is video of the procession to Tulare Methodist Church, where services for Jones began at 10 this morning. The public was invited to attend the service. On their Facebook page, the Porterville Fire Department described Jones as relentless and said he wanted to be the best firefighter he could possibly be to support his brothers. Tomorrow, a joint memorial service will be held for Jones and Captain Ramon Figueroa. Both were killed in the line of duty last week while battling the Porterville Library fire. The joint service for Figueroa and Jones will be held at the Porterville Church of the Nazarene at 11 o'clock. The families have requested dress attire for uniformed personnel. The public is invited to attend that ceremony as well. The California Farm Bureau reported this week a reduced snowpack has led to cautious water allocations for San Joaquin Valley farmers. Congressman TJ Cox has released a statement on those allocations. The Federal Central Valley Project said Tuesday it expects to provide agricultural water contractors south of the Delta with 15% in supplies. The CVP says the allocation would have been less had it not been for the new memorandum that was signed by President Donald Trump last week in Bakersfield. Congressman Cox released a statement earlier today. He wrote in part, quote, Tuesday's allocations announcement shows the need for increased investment in water storage and the supporting conveyance infrastructure to better manage extreme weather swings between heavy precipitation and extreme drought, end quote. Now, to read his full statement, be sure to head to our website, turn to 23.com.